Hello there and welcome to the Alstein Film Podcast, where we talk film, TV, games, and all that jazz that there's no tomorrow. This week we're talking about The Avengers for its 10-year anniversary. My name is Tom, wow. as always, I'm joined with my co-host, John. I know it's been 10 years, it's crazy. Yeah, it's surreal, actually, you know, like, we've got to 10 years of The of the Avengers. You can see how much has changed in the MCU. In that time when The Avengers came out, it wasn't merely the MCU. Oh, yeah, it's so crazy isn't it yeah yeah i mean this yeah. this film really was the make or break of the mcu you think about like the dceu it broke apart due to the failure of justice league like if this film had failed we wouldn't have an mc i don't think we would have an mcu in the way that we know it now it would if it was still going at all it would be come something completely different and i really think this really kicked the mcu into it into a household name what did you think I know that you, you, you've you watched it more recently than I have because you watched it last year, but coming back to it. Yeah, it was very different to you know you like you, when you're watching it when you're younger because it's these superheroes that are coming on screen all together and it was really cool. It felt a lot shorter this time because, you know, like what everything that's happening and there was like this bit in the film where it's just like everything just paused for a minute and then we got to Bow of New York, you know, like when we got Coulson dying yes uh, in the film but did he die oh well you will have to find Ooh. out in the Ooh. agents of shield yeah just it's okay. agents of i feel I, i've heard and i i i didn't watch agents of shield after season two maybe but i've heard that apparently it's a different universe oh is that is that because tr- i know that you've watched it is that true oh that's very hard to argue to say it's a different universe because in the first and second seasons they had the same events during yes like yeah i remember Thor. season one season one ends with the fall of shield and 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 everything in, in winter soldier doesn't it yeah it does talk about winter soldier and everything that's happening and then saw there was a saw bit as well yes with Sif. yeah and they had to just keep controlling the episodes so like okay we're gonna release it for that time slot <laughs> And it was very weird when, you know, the film came out and then everyone was had to keep the episodes in time. And then it was a bit weird when you thought, oh, are the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. going to appear in this film? No, it's... No. <laughs> it's just, it's in their own TV show, but... I remember before, and, and, I, and I, I do think that the general consensus is that the, the Defenders shows and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And, and, and humans, they aren't considered to be part of the mainline MCU canon. But I remember when Age of Ultron came out, all I was thinking is, oh, yeah, no, no, Coulson's going to be in it. They're going to bring back Coulson and he's going to bring the team together for some reason. But it definitely was a, a bold choice not to do that after they'd have they'd killed him off and made this big thing. But I have to say that anyone who listens to this podcast will know I'm fairly critical of the MCU. I think it can be so much better. And uh, I'm, I'm also critical of the Yeah, there, there are so many things that I want from it. And I want to say wholeheartedly, 100%, this film is what I want the MCU to be. I had so much fun. Like genuinely, Mm. it was an out of body experience for me rewatching this film. I felt like I was back in the cinema in 2012 and I was so happy. I cannot express how much I enjoyed this film and how much I think that the MCU never got close to this level of filmmaking. Oh, the phone. Oh, uh, I just, just um, the, you keep talking. Just, just the, just, uh, important, you just keep talking. important I don't business. Know what's happening. But I think that this really is like the pinnacle of the MCU, and I'm I'm so happy with it. And I want to start off by saying, okay, just I'm like oh, he's back. <laughs> I want to say I want to say very quickly, I don't like Joss Whedon, just as a person. I, I, he yeah. doesn't seem too very nice, allegedly. But I have to admit that even though this film is directed by him, it is amazing. And it's important to note that he isn't the only person, you know, who put this together. So, you know, in praising this film, I am not praising Joss Whedon whatsoever. But damn, I loved this film. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah. And it's very weird, you know, like, this is the same guy who did Justice League. And you're just like, oh, oh, okay. Because, yeah, you don't want to, like, ruin the fun of the film. You just don't be, you don't want to be, the, be that guy. Just like, hey, hey, buddy, you know that guy who directed this film? He directed this, and he's not a very nice person, allegedly. <laughs> so, yeah, you just don't want to ruin that. But it is an amazing film, this, so, yeah. Yeah, I think that something that 
these days in MCU, we've got so many characters and especially in Infinity War, you've got so many different storylines and so many different you know, people that they need to juggle in terms of screen time and relevance to the plot and their own character arcs. And I feel like this film does it purposefully. Every single member of the team is so well realized. I love them all. I know that at the time there's obviously the, oh, Hawkeye's lame. I don't feel that. I think that every single member is so well realized and some of yeah. the best iterations of them all. These days, they're basically all variations on the same quippy egotistical character obviously obviously it's all variations on that but I feel like it all strays from this comedic point of view but in this I love the distinctions I love the you know Tony Stark he's extravagant and he's like the funny one but then you got Steve Rogers who speaks like he's from the 40s and Thor is like from like a Shakespearean kind of like otherworldly thing like him and Loki both speak in this very specific kind of like doth doth you know kind of thing like it, it's beautiful and then you've got and then <laughs> you've got bruce banner you know? <laughs> does mother yeah, know you wear her drapes oh yeah <laughs> like and and you've and then you've got like the different ways that that bruce banner and and natasha romanoff and clint barton and all these different people speak different ways and they feel like that they are different worlds all coming together and i think that is the beauty of this this is a time before the mcu really cracked down on its formula and began to squeeze the characters through the same funnel and i love that they're so different i think that this is some of the best iterations of these characters i think it's so good yeah i agree and you know as you look later on in the MCU it can be a bit hard to like juggle with most of these characters you know like with the motivation arcs and are they two-dimensional or three-dimensional as they go along but there's this is a perfect example of like how to show very different characters showing their like experience and character dynamics as well and it's the best iteration I agree so yeah I was very pleased about that when I saw oh yeah they're three-dimensional they're a lot different else absolutely I think it's it's worth fair to say that Iron Man is the main Avenger in this film and obviously a lot of mcu comedy is so insufferable but i think the point here is that he's being insufferable what i love so much about him in this film is that he pushes everyone's buttons obviously there's the amazing scene where they all argue and the camera follows the conversation around before turning upside down with the scepter kind of looming over them it's beautiful the cinematography in this film um yes i love him as a character and the way that you know, meeting like Steve, for example, somebody who his dad would never shut up about, like he's meeting Steve and Steve just says, actually, you're nothing. You only fight for yourself. You're not a team player and don't care about like the actual threat here. And to take that in a conflict and have him resolve it at the end, proving himself by taking the nuke into space and sacrificing himself is amazing. You know, Jarvis yes. says this is a one way trip and he's like, Oh no, uh, I think Steve says it's a one way trip. And Tony's like, yeah, but I, yeah, I've got to do it. And I just think it's so it. <laughs> well realized. Yeah. He's, he, I, th- I think that, you know, t- taking him from his two appearances in Iron Man and Iron Man 2, it's a really, really good progression. And I love how they then take that further in Iron Man 3, for example. Oh, Iron Man 3, that's a really good film. Yes, I was like, oh, okay. But then when you go into it from, you know, taking fun Avengers and put it into Iron Man 3, you know, he has an anxiety attacks and, you know, yeah. uh, everything about it. And, that is great character progression, but then mm. it kind of gets lost. What I love about Iron Man 3 is that it is directly reactionary to what happened in Avengers. And I feel like a lot of the MCU films almost miss the point of a big crossover. Like, I, yeah. to me, a crossover should, sh- should like, you know, shake the world of these characters and in their next appearances should be reactionary to that. And I feel like Iron Man 3 is the best example of that until you get to Endgame when I feel like the films that came after Endgame and the TV shows have done really well in reacting to that. Um, And I think that this film kind of acts as a way to, it changes every single one of the main heroes. And Mm. I really think that that is a great way to then kind of use that as a diving board off, especially when you've got someone like Captain America who has to just adapt to a new world. And again, just, I just love what they do with him in this film. I love that he's like, oh, yeah, the world has changed. And then he realizes, well, no, it hasn't. But it's people like the Avengers who are who will always be there. I think Cap gets his opportunity to win a war in this film. And that moment at the end when Tony wakes up and he said, oh, what just happened? And Cap just looks up and he says, 
we won. It's such a cathartic moment because he uh, didn't get that. Yeah. And the, the beauty of the ending of First Avenger is that he comes out and, he, and he's in this totally different world. And the only thing he cares about is I had a uh, date. I lost everything. I lost my life. And you get to see ha- him regain his own sense of purpose. At the beginning of the film, you see him just alone punching that punch bag in what is such a good... Like, the way they introduce all the characters in this film, mm. oh my God, I like... It just made me so happy. Like when Fury speaking to all the council and the council are like, you really think these freaks and monsters can win a war? And and Fury's like, no, they're won by soldiers. And then it cuts to Cap like punching the punch bag. Like, that's just cool. That's just yeah. like this film takes itself seriously in a way that they just they they don't do enough these days. And I love it so much. Yeah, great openings to characters, especially Hulk, because you know, it was supposed to be a really hard transition from Edward Norton's Hulk. And then Mark Ruffalo's Hulk, and he did a really good role of uh, playing that as this very nervous scientist who gets angry easily and turns into this green, huge monster. But yeah, yeah. it's a great iteration of the character as well, like the opening. You know, at the beginning, he was trying to help sick people, you know, trying to be far away from the public eye. And, uh, and yeah, it's visual storytelling was kind of key in this, you know, like how, you know, like when Cat Bucks in the punch bag. And then you got Tony Stark, who's building the the Stark Tower, mm. very Stark. And yeah. then you got Black Widow, who's trying to do her job, you know, just fighting. And then who else? You have Thor, who comes in a little bit later. Uh, they yeah. kind of, they don't all unite at once, which is pretty cool. They kind of like gradually build up. And I think that that's important, you know, for the for yeah. the plot not to feel completely overstuffed already. Obviously, this film keeps Hawkeye as this antagonistic character throughout and i love that because the film in instead of saying okay we're going to give hawkeye a backstory and we're going to completely develop him they say no instead we're just going to make him an antagonist so his stake in the final battle can be revenge against loki and also a chance to prove himself a hero and i think that he's so cool hawkeye's so good in that final like yes. just like when in in there's a moment in the final battle that i've always loved where thor like he drops down and he says i haven't finished business with loki and Hawkeye's like yeah get in line and it's like oh he's gonna absolutely and the fact that like at the end when they're when they all stand in front of Loki and Hawkeye's got his like got an arrow right to his face (laughs) I think that just so many of these things the sincerity of it when we talked about Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy we talked about Uh. how sincere it is and how it doesn't care about taking the piss out of itself but instead it takes itself so seriously while still being comedic. And I think that that's what this film does in spades. I love it. I love how I can laugh at it, but it's not laughing at itself. And I feel like when they, when they begin to laugh at themselves, that's when I begin to feel a bit of a disconnect these days. <laughs> Sorry. Just exactly. Ah, oh, the score. Alan Silvestri. Oh. Like, every time yeah, you hear that score and it brings a lot of nostalgia, you know, like to hear that. And then just like, wow. Mm. You know, when it opened your minutes, like, sir, what are we going to do? And uh-huh. then Nick Fury is like, <laughs> we're going to do this. The, the, I didn't yeah. know what's it. Yeah, he's like that. He's yeah, like, yeah. He's like, he's like, he's like, as of right now, we're in, we're, we are at war. And, and Carlson's like, what do we do? And the, the camera pulls in on Fury as he looks into the middle distance and, and the music's building before you you smash into the dun 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 it like <laughs> just amazing yeah. I agree with you 100% I love how yeah. apart from that opening scene they don't use the main Avengers theme once and oh yeah like they use little variations on it and I think that's so cool because just the moment where Hulk begins to walk away the music begins to build uh. Like I just slowly, yeah, yeah, so good. That's my secret cap. I'm always yeah. angry. And we keep <laughs> on building until he collides with the beast. And then it keeps on building and building until yeah. they're all in a circle and you get that amazing theme that is now like so famous and they use it in so many of the films. And yeah. just that just that moment is like even watching it at home. Like I wasn't in a packed cinema, but I was just squealing because I really think that the film uses it. What was that? I <laughs> squeal. Yeah, that was me. It just in just at home, just. <laughs> but no, th- oh, that okay, is okay, it. That's even worse. That's even worse. You, you go like. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, I oh my I'm god, just... I was I was a mess. I was about to cry like 
I think that a lot of what I love about this I, film, because obviously you didn't watch this at the cinema when it came out. I think a lot <laughs> of the reason why I like this so much is because of nostalgia. I can't lie. This really, oh, true. Can't argue. really can't argue. hit. No, it, it really made me feel like I was nine years old again. And when I went to see the film the first time, I saw it three times at the cinema because I loved it that much. Um, but the first time I saw it at the cinema, I ran out of the cinema when Bruce begins to turn to the Hulk because I was so scared. And I was peeking behind like the wall like watching him like really scared and i just think that there's so many things that this film just changed like i came out of this film and i was like oh my god superheroes are my life now and i don't i I don't if it wasn't for avengers i really don't think i'd be into film just in general as i am as much as i am now this film means so much like we could be we could be doing doctor strange this week but no i was like we're doing avengers because it's the 10 year anniversary oh hell and i'm yeah. not missing out on this and I've, i loved every second of it ah, it's yeah. so good it's a bit weird you know like you got this you know legendary team in avengers and then you can you can you kind of see it in age of ultra there's like one sequence that actually showed that was when all the Avengers was like circling around the button that was going to crush Sokovia. Yeah. yeah and drop it down. And that was really cool. Like the slow motion camera, just like getting all that. And that was, that was the one sequence that really showed that. And then, well, Infinity War, it's Thanos' film. So I can't mm. argue about that. Yeah, and then Endgame. Endgame was the pole scene, but yeah, the time travel heist was just, oh, okay. I mean, okay. I can't argue that the Avengers films all have amazing, like big, crowd pleasing moments you know you, as you say the way they're fighting around the button in in age of ultron in infinity war where cap enters like from the train and when oh, thor arrives in wakanda yeah. just brilliant moments and in endgame i'm 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 immensely critical about endgame one day we will talk about endgame but this the portal scene is amazing <laughs> like just the just the build up, oh. just the 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 pan across. Like it looks like trash, but the like just the idea is so good, and the fact that we finally get Avengers Assemble, and we get the main theme in its biggest, most bombastic form. That's very nice. That's very nice, and it's all set up from this film right here. Yeah, and uh, I crazy. just it's so yeah. good. Yeah, nothing will be. Avengers we loved it it just brought back so many memories talking to my friends about like Avengers like what was the the possibility going to be and then many years later you showed me the big plan for Marvel and Empire I remember that magazine that you showed me yes it had the whole timeline of like what's going to happen yeah I mean as I said Avengers came out and I was like okay this is my life I'm going to watch everything I'm going to read everything I'm going to just like I'm just going to marry myself to (laughs) Avengers and I completely did. And this film brought me back to that. Like afterwards, I was jumping about my house, just like, ah, like just so happy because I was expecting to not like it. I was like, you know what? I haven't watched it in three years. It's, I don't think I'll enjoy it. I just, I think that I'm over these films, but no, I just had such a good time. There's so like, and they also really bring the emotions. Coulson's death is such a gut-wrenching moment. And the way that, it affects them all. You know, Thor, he approaches his hammer, he puts his hand out to it, and then he closes his fist. Like, he doesn't even know if he's worthy after what, like, he's let happen. You know, like, Fury shows Cap the blood-stained trading cards, and he's like, you know, I guess he never did make you sign them. Like, the whole film shows them, like, bonding with Coulson, and Coulson being this just really sweet guy and, and really, like, good person. And it all comes to a head in this scene that then manages to invigorate them like you know when they all like suit up and like you know Thor picks up his hammer and Iron Man fixes his suit and stuff like that and it all comes together and even Coulson says it as as before he dies this is never going to work if he didn't have something to avenge it's just amazing it like I have such a grin on my face right now just thinking about how how good it is I uh, yeah ah, it's so good there's one bit that I really liked was when there was the camera just like uh, just like showing what the other members of the Avengers were doing so like what Hawkeye was doing like shooting mm-hmm. arrows mm-hmm. and then you've got Captain America and Iron Man using the shield to like slice those um, I'm an Chitauri. idiot I don't know. <laughs> Chitauri oh my god Chitauri and, and then you've got Thor and Hulk just battling on that 
beast. So, yeah, that was really cool. And then you just punch his Thor. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, absolutely. I think that is one of my favorite shots in the film, just a continuous follow through. What I love about the Battle of New York is, you know where everybody is at the whole time. Hawkeye's in the roof, Iron Man's in the sky, Hulk is like mostly in buildings, Thor is also in the sky, Black Widow is either down below, like flying on the things or on Stark Tower, and Cap's down below. And they use that geography so well in that scene where everything goes through. And what I love about the Battle of New York, something that they're not doing in MCU movies these, these days, but looks like they're doing in Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, is there are people around, there are citizens, they have to save people, that, like, they are heroes, and that's what they do, like, there are just such, like, when um, Cat, Black Widow, and Hawkeye crash, and they're all, like, like, cover, taking cover, and, and, and Cap's, like, he's, like, Hawkeye, can you help us with this, and Hawkeye's, like, Captain, It'd be my genuine pleasure. <laughs> and he starts shooting like it's and then Cap like runs on the bus and the bus flips him and they have the little Captain American music thing. And oh my God, this film is just so many layers of perfection to me. It just does so many things right. It hits every like Loki, what a villain. They take what, what they villain, have of him. Yeah. yeah, they take what they have of him in Thor and they take that to the next level. His want of vengeance and his targeting of Earth, his need to to be seen as a ruler, to be seen on top of everything. And he's got the the horns, and he just like Tom Hiddleston plays him so well. There are so many iconic moments, like when he makes everyone kneel for him, or when he has that conversation with Thor when Hulk smashes him about. There are just so many amazing moments that are character defining and like are just still hold up so well. Ah, oh, so many emotions uh, to that as well. One thing that was really annoying was that they could have used Coulson's death later in the films, like to you know reflect, you know, what brought the team together. I think. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I don't think it's ever mentioned again oh. since after this film, and it's such a shame because again, one of the great moments when Tony is threatening Loki, and he's like. There's no version of this where you come out on top because if we can't protect the world, you can be damn well sure we can avenge it. And obviously, oh, Loki throws him out the window and, and the Mark 8 comes out and, he, and he, he shoots up and he says, and there's one other person you pissed off. His name was Phil. And like, you just get just that beautiful moment of catharsis and revenge, like literally an Avenger avenging. I think it's just so good. So good. I think that just ha- oh, it's just it's just a good film. It's just a really oh, good film. I, I agree. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I just. I find it so difficult to critique this film. However, I do have critiques. They're all nitpicks, oh. but they do. So I think that the CGI isn't always there. I mean, you know, it doesn't. I mean, it, I don't expect it, it to be perfect, but it's not it's, always there. Sometimes distracting. I'm well. I mean, it's in 2011, so 2012. Oh, 2012. So... It's ten years, John. It's ten years ago. Oh my god! When did... that okay, so it, right. if, if you didn't watch it at the cinema, did you like watch it that same year, or did you watch it like a couple of years later? I, I watched it in two thousand and fourteen or fifteen. Okay, cool, cool. Oh my god! So yeah, it's. I mean, it really, it really has. But I mean, you think about how much has changed since then. It is just mental. Um, but yeah, I, I do think there are a couple of moments where. Like the comedy that I don't like in these films does begin to show itself. Uh, you know, I think that this film definitely, Kevin Feige saw what worked in this film and was like, okay, we'll do that forever. And they really did uh, just do that. And I, I think yeah. that's, that sometimes that doesn't work. And and yeah, it, it drags a little bit, just a little bit. I feel like the pacing is very strong, but you know, sometimes it's 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 a little bit, it's just a little bit not. But but yeah, I yeah. mean, I just I just I, there's just so much here that is like i also think this is the best mcu hulk i think that this film really understands oh, no. bruce banner like when he talks about like getting low and, and putting a bullet in his mouth and letting the other guy spit it out it's so good the way that they portray him and just like and then they keep this secret of oh how is he managing to to keep this in until as i said before the reveal that he's always angry just really clever elements i really have no idea how they did it so well and how it remains so good even today. I think this held up so, so bloody well. Yeah. Just reminiscing all the times that, you know, the MCU has come for a very long way from Avengers. And now we're on to Doctor Strange, Multiverse Madness. Yeah. Multiverse? Jeez. <sighs> and then the Tesseract. Oh, yeah, the Tesseract. That was a cool idea. You know, 
with mm. Loki using the Tesseract to control people. But then it started the idea of the Infinity Stones. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. it's a really, it's a really good retcon because it was originally, it, it's not the Space Stone here; it's the Cosmic Cube from the comics. And I think it's, it was really cool that they eventually decided actually. It's the Space Stone, and they managed to tie it into the Infinity Saga. Oh story wow, line. that that was a quick move and smart. Yeah, mm. that was wow. Yeah, I mean, hey, one of the most <laughs> iconic end credit scenes as well, where uh, uh, the other yeah. is, you know, humans to to challenge them is to is to court death, and Thanos turns and he smiles, and obviously. I think what they were going for is the whole Thanos is in love with death thing from the comics where death like is like an actual, there is a physical embodiment of death. But I think that just, I remember when at the cinema and I was like, it's Red Skull. (laughs) And obviously I didn't know who Thanos was. And I think from there I found out it was Thanos. I bought, I bought this Infinity Gauntlet Omnibus. You've seen it. It's, it's, it's like a thousand pages long. I don't know how you got this. It's bigger than one of my Berserk volume. (laughs) Mangus thing and it's a it's lot expensive like, oh, yeah, yeah it was expensive but it's it's a really strong i think it's a really good story like seeing thanos collecting the infinity stones and it's basically infinity war really but the avengers win at the end of the day instead of losing so so bad but they do have the snap and all that and yeah it, it, it's it was it was Wait, really cool i have a question that i don't mind getting spoiled so how did they get everyone back it's different isn't it um okay so this is something that I thought they were going to do in Endgame, but they didn't, is that when everybody went, they got trapped inside the Soul Stone. Now, the Soul Stone, it wasn't on Vormir, like it isn't in Infinity War. It's actually inside Adam Warlock, who uh, will be in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Whoa. Um, but he is like a, uh, like a like like an entity that was that was created... I've I've got I've 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 read his complete collection as well. It, it, I think I think he's really cool. Um, he has he he has adventures with Gamora and Pip the Troll in the comics. Um, and he has run into Thanos as well. But like, so they all go inside there, and he's also in there because they because that to, in order to get the stone, Thanos had to trap him inside the Soul Stone, and he eventually he essentially frees everyone, and so they all come back being released out. Of this it's it's so like cosmic and weird and it, it it really works it's a lot more interesting that, than what they did in, than what they did in endgame to be honest but there that we go sounds really interesting it reminds me of crisis and infinite earths um comic yeah. a bit yeah like what were they gonna do with specter in that one and that was like oh my god that was crazy i wish they could have done that because you know that would be a really cool introduction of adam warlock and that oh that, that could have been a really cool fight with I mean, um, I, I I always thought that that is what they would that that's what they were gonna do um to have just all the heroes trapped inside the soul stone but obviously they didn't do that and it's a it's a shame but maybe audiences weren't ready for that yet I mean you think about this film just an alien invasion is such a big leap already <laughs> like it's it, it really was like a, a a big thing for them to do and i think they executed it really well obviously you've got classic 2010 sky beam baby like but it is really I, I think the whole inva- alien invasion the way that they tie it in with the nuke that ends up coming into the city it's all really cool and a lot of time in team up movies just fighting an army is kind of boring i think it's boring in every single one of the other avengers films which is why I love it when they're, everyone's fighting like one person, like Thanos. Like, that's so cool. But I think it works in this film because Loki can't fight to save his life, especially not against people like the Hulk. Like, when Hulk just, like, smashed him about, it's iconic. It's amazing. But, but yeah, like, I, I do think that them all fighting the Chitauri is really cool. And as I say, it gives them opportunity to save people. And that final, one of the final parts of the film, you see all these news reports you see people who love the Avengers, people who hate them. Stanley's cameo, what a cameo! Superheroes oh in New York, give me a break. It's it like it's what it's such a good cameo, one of his best. And I love that that immediately frames what the Avengers have done, and that you know it's not going to be an easy road forward. But as Nick Fury says at the end, they'll come back because we'll need them to. And it's just, yeah, it's it's what a what a film. I feel like I've just been gushing. For half an hour, just like, <laughs> oh my god, Avengers is so and, and good. And trying it to is. add in some stuff, and then just like, uh, yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a great film. Um, I feel so strongly about this. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Be passionate about it. Um, cast. 
great cast um, in this. You know, we Black Widow, Thor, Iron Man, Hulk, Nick Fury, Phil Coulson, and then yeah, <laughs> just what, I yeah. didn't know what to say because you just got everything that I got out. And just like, wow. uh, wait, I'll um, there's got wait, there's got to be more. I'll 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 think of something. Oh, okay. Uh, what about the scene where they have to like fix the helicarrier? Ooh, that's very good because that was that the first kind of time middle action sequence. Yeah, we got we see the teamwork work in the first time, especially with Captain America and Iron Man. But there was a great fight between Thor and uh, Hulk, and Hulk was trying yeah. to lift, up, lift the the hammer, but he was not worthy. And then Black Widow. Oh, that was a terrifying sequence when Black Widow was trying to calm Bruce, but then Bruce oh yeah, didn't yeah. As I said, that's when I ran out of the cinema when I was a kid. Just like oh, no. genuine. <laughs> Yeah, I remember literally like my dad was was with me, and I literally turned to him and I was like, "I, I, I'm th- this is scary. I need to go. And uh, will you come with me?" And he's like, "No, I will not." And I was like, "Okay." And then I ran out. But like, yeah, I think that is such hey, a cool sequence. I'm just gonna run out. Can you follow me? No, this is my film. <laughs> yeah, this, this is, is my film. This is cinema. Uh, it you really don't is. It. You don't understand cinema. It really yeah. is like. Especially having all the Avengers like fight, they're having this huge argument about their methods and the way that Shield is lying to them and the way that it all comes crashing down. Like Tony and Steve have this whole thing where they're like, "Come on, put on the suit, put on the suit, let's go a few rounds." You know, like I like you know, you're just a lab experiment, and yet then straight away they have to like they're forced to do that, and they're like, "Put on the suit," like yeah, like we've actually got to do this. And I think it, it it's really cool. Oh, the bit when he falls out that. At Stark Tower and just uh, oh, just get the suit. Oh, 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 oh. so good. That prob- oh. That's probably my favorite Iron Man suit up. I love the suitcase, the Mark V, but I think the Mark Seven or is it eight? Seven. There's too many marks. There's too Wait. many. I think I that. I think I said eight before, but I think it's seven. The Mark Seven. I it think doesn't that's my matter, favorite Tom. One. It doesn't. Matter. It matters to me, John. Oh my God! Listen, the suits. <laughs> yeah. Are okay. Just- Okay, well, okay. Right, okay, so Mark 1 is the one that he makes in the cave. Mark 2 is the silver one. Okay. Mark 3 is the uh-huh. one, like, the one from Iron Man that Iron Man right, crushes. I'm going to get you about them. I'm going to get them. <laughs> Mark, Mark 4 is the one from the beginning of Iron Man 2. Mark 5 is the suitcase. Mark 6 is the one with the triangle. And Mark 7 is the one from Endgame. Okay, I've done it. I did it. Do, do I get... Okay. Oh, oh, I thought I, you were going to get Mark do I, 78. I don't... Um, I, don't he doesn't ha- I, think, I think he's got, like, 50 of them in total. Mark 42 is the one from Iron Man 3. Oh yeah, as I said, I wait, like the MC- Mark I, wait, 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 Iron Man whoa, three. Whoa, whoa. Mark whoa, whoa, whoa. eight to Mark forty two. Correct. In Iron Man three. Well, don't do you remember the end of Iron Man three when all the Iron Man suits come out? Those are like uh, okay, all the ones. Okay. Uh, How there, many there's suits Mark did he make? Jeez, uh, made okay, I think I think that forty two is Iron Man three, and then you see forty three, forty four, and forty five. One of those is. The Hulkbuster in Age of Age of Ultron, and then in Civil War you got the forty six, and the forty seven I think is in Homecoming, and then I want to say that the forty eight is like the nanotech one from Infinity War, and then oh, maybe the forty nine is the one from Endgame. Ble- bleed, bleeding, bleed. I don't know. Ble- bleeding, e- bleeding edge armor is the one from the comics. Yeah, bleeding edge. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Iron Man's so cool. <laughs> like I have my problems with Iron Man, but he's his suits are cool. His suits are yeah. cool. Yeah, oh, especially, you know, oh, in Infinity War, that was so cool. Like, it was definitely from the comics with Invincible Iron Man, uh, the one yeah. I have at home. And it was so cool with the bleeding edge technology, nanotech. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I, I agree. I think that's so cool. I love it at the end of Infinity War. Again, we'll talk about the other Avengers films someday. It's not going to happen soon because we've got Doctor Strange and stuff coming, but we'll do it one day. But at the end when he's fighting Thanos and Thanos keeps on smashing all the... It, nanotech off so he has to like reconfigure the nanotech from his arm like to his helmet and it's so cool all the things that they do in that film really really creative stuff but um i actually want to talk about the the outfits in this film particularly captain america's suit which a lot of people don't like uh what are your thoughts on it well it's funny in the first one that he keeps like the suit the original suit from yes first avenger i said that was a cool touch you know like what he was going to do with the suit and trying to use it to save New York. And then the second one, it was a lot more darker to style because, you know, the, no, the, he, the, the one from Avengers isn't the same one as first of as, as first Avenger. Oh, the one from first. Oh. Of, uh, the, it's Colson redesigned it. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, I got the wrong. I got the wrong. I stick there. I, I mean, surprise, surprise. I love it. I think it's so cool. I love I love how blue it is, especially when the helmet's off. I think he looks really cool. 
He's just, ah, oh, just what a film. What a film, John. Just what a, what an what, experience what I have had. What a, what an experience. Um, what are you going to give it out of 10? Nine out of 10. I agree. Big nine. Absolute. Just yeah. well done. Round of applause you, for you Avengers, said, everyone. Yeah. Woo! Another great superhero film that we talked about. The Batman. Yeah. Oh my god, that was a month ago. Yeah, it's two months ago. You know what a month ago was, John? It's the best superhero film ever. <laughs> Morbius. It's Morbius. Yeah, wow, watch our Morbius, Morbius video. Is, you... is the movie. Watch, watch our Morbius movie. video if you haven't already. Because it's a movie. It's yeah. definitely a movie. But yes, thank you everyone for listening. So for if you enjoyed, leave it a give a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more because we're going to be doing so much Marvel in the coming weeks. Next week, we've got Moon Knight. Week after that, we've got Doctor Strange. Week after that, we've got Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. The week after that, we've got Thor and then we're going to be doing all four Thor films. It's going to be great. Oh my God. <laughs> so oh yeah, yeah subscribe if you want to see that and we have done... July, right? The new one. Yeah, the new one's in July. But yeah, you and you can subscribe. We've done loads more Marvel stuff. We've done every single spider-man film we did black widow we did shang chi we did eternals oh, probably more as well falcon winter soldier loki uh, uh, uh what a uh, one division hawkeye we've done loads of stuff so yeah if you like marvel because who doesn't then get in on that and if you have any questions for us or you just tell us your thoughts on avengers or anything that we have spoken about you can give us an email at ourstimefilmpod at gmail.com and we will answer it on the podcast right here and you can follow us on twitter or instagram at Alstime film pod yes yes uh thank you for listening uh be safe be good we enjoyed Ooh. talking about avengers tom you you did as much i tried to fit in as much as possible but you said Bleh. i'm <laughs> sorry yeah, i have fine. so many i have that's so fine. many things one to day, say one day one day i'll it. talk about one film that will be passionate as uh, <laughs> just, uh, just like oh my god the cinematography the sound I think that'll be oh no I think that was me with your name yeah yeah I think I talked about that for a long time yeah I did again I watched it for you but thank you for listening take what you're given give nothing back goodbye goodbye